Hey, what's up guys, Andrew. We're gonna get right into seeding some cauliflower. So I personally like this variety right here uh, called Flame Star. Uh, it makes a nice orange cauliflower. Uh, I've done also Skywalker, uh, which is a white cauliflower. It's kind of cool, it's got like a Star Wars name. Um, I've tried other ones, individual cauliflower and like what they call like the Romanesco, like the green Fibonacci sequence uh, cauliflower. I didn't really have very good results with those. Um, so I personally like this one, it says so happy deep. Just gonna be careful opening the pack sometimes. Just a few seeds that are just like lurk in there, yep, exactly. And you can kind of lose them if you're not careful. And you open it. That's why every pack is careful. Open it carefully. Be careful how these instructions are actually going. So we need all these seeds into the cedar here. Only 250, so I'm just not going to let anyone take off the roll and get shot there. Just going to take a little anti. I do see that there's a few that got stuck here inside. Just to clear that out so it closes nice. Okay. And for these, small seed, we'll go with a three size hole. I'll probably go with a two, it kind of depends on personal preference. I keep all these for the Equacer, the certifying agent. This proves which seed variety I use. So this is gonna go in the record of seeds for this year. And let's see, we'll do tag right away. So it's going to be the only generation cauliflower is CAU. Okay, the 29th, I believe. Let me just double check. Yes, 29th. 29. Level 3. And Flame Star FS. Yeah, Flame Star FS. So, this is our tag. On far on 29th March, since our variety. So, put that in the front right once we're done seating. And uh, we'll get right into it here. So, seed mix is moist. Oh no. The butterfly in the greenhouse. Oh fuck, here. So a little gruesome thing about the farm, guys. A little uh, sad truth. Uh, full transparency, authenticity is that no, we don't use any pesticides at all whatsoever. Not even the kind that are permitted for organic uh, production. However, I just saw this white moth, which I'm pretty sure it's a cabbage moth fly into the greenhouse from underneath the side because it's not intact and I just went and squished it with my foot. Um, so, you know, I will put up sticky traps. I will squish them with my hands or squish them with my foot, like I just did there, to keep a control on the population. Um, you know, if I know that it's a bad bug, I'm not going to go around just like killing anything willy-nilly, you know, and you definitely don't kill the beneficials, those guys are friends, like the ladybugs, bees, wasps, spiders, worms, all these good, good creatures, but uh, cabbage moss, pierre de chou, in French, not our friends.
have to lay eggs in here, that would be really, really bad news. So hopefully I got it before it was a problem. Because uh, the thing about not using pesticides is like, we don't have a lot of methods to protect our stuff. We're going to put wool covers everywhere. Uh, sometimes they can get under the wool cover, you know, you do your best to, to make it a tight seal, but So it's difficult to control the bugs without pesticides at all there, but I feel like that's what uh, makes sense to me. It doesn't make sense to be going in and killing all of any one bug, even if it's a bad one that you don't like for your vegetable production. It's like not for us to play the hand of God and uh, you know, I do want to promote predatory in, in, insects. I do want to, you know, use physical traps where possible, but I'm not going to start spraying products in the field. I just, I just don't believe in that. You know, like the difference between a pesticide organic and a pesticide that's used in conventional is that conventional can use any pesticide, so it could be synthetic, which means they're just like created in a laboratory by, by people. Um, whereas organic pesticide has to be from a natural source, so it'll be like from like a, a flower or like a, an oil or a bacteria in the soil. Something like that, um, you know, and maybe I will change my mind about this at some point and I'll decide, you know, I, I will need to start using some of these organic pesticides. Um, one that I'm really personally against using that they do allow in organic is called Trust. And I've heard that uh, this product is uh, carcinogenic for the applicator, so not for the consumer. So it is actually safe for the consumer. However, for the farmer, the worker in the field spraying the trust, uh, it's really dangerous to be breathing it in, even with proper mask. Uh, so I don't ever want to be spraying that here. Uh, the active ingredient in trust is a spinosad. And, uh, just some gnarly stuff, so, you know. I have seen a lot of farms use BT, Baxillus thuringiensis. That one, I'm a little more open to. I've never used it before. I've never used anything on their farm. But, you know, if for whatever reason, things really, really weren't working. Because that's the thing is like, this is like four years of growing no pesticides ever. And, you know, technically a year on top of that because before I came, like this is a fourth year of production here on the farm, but also ran a production in Hemingford, a restaurant in Montreal for a year before coming here, same way with, with no pesticides. And, you know, I had good, good results in all the productions. So, you know, part of it is rotation, definitely part, part of it. So we're going to see with the coming years now that we're going to be growing more often with similar things in the same areas if we start to see more pest pressure. Um, part of it is just like ecosystem, you know, like having the pond attracts so many frogs and the frogs, they feed on insects, you know, and like they will feed on beneficial foods, but you know, things tend to, to kind of balance out the way that they, they should. And, you know, for us, the one crop I would say that we've had trouble with is potatoes, but it's not a staple crop, you know, it's not something that we definitely need to be growing, but those just, those Colorado potato beetles, they are voracious. Once they get in there, they just, they just multiply, 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 and it's, you can go on hand squishing missions, and it's like, uh, it's pretty futile, because you got to get all the eggs, and got a big field of potatoes, take hours, and you know, I've done it, but um, you 
cucumber beetles are not as bad because the, the, those are the little yellow striped beetles with the black stripe because they're actually attracted to those yellow sticky traps. So you get the sticky traps out and get them to do well that way under control. Um, I've also used like a hand vacuum, so like a little dust bus where you go around, you suck them up in your little vacuum, and uh, you can control the the chisel the cucumber beetle. You can do it that way. Um, yeah, I don't even uh, have a backpack spare on the on the car. So, you know, we have a flame leader, um, we haven't actually got it to use in our production, I think this is going to be the year we're a lot more organized, there's a lot of things in place, um, I think that things are going to be allowing and permitting for a little bit of time to explore and improve our production techniques so get you know getting the black plastic mulch on the beds has been difficulty for us we tried it with the ECS plastic layer and I feel like that machine would work if you're on like a, a sandy sandy loam soil uh, which we do have in the back 